Good morning. I am Dr. Pradeep Suryanshi. I am professor and head Department of Neonatology at Bharti Vidyapir University in Pune in India. Today we are going to discuss about a very important aspect of a point of care neonatal ultrasound in the field of neonatology. What has happened in the last two decades that the brain ultrasound and cardiac ultrasound has evolved enormously. Along with that, the lung ultrasound and the abdominal ultrasound has came in a big way to improve the outcome of the neonatal bedside ultrasound. The bedside ultrasound is useful in the form of diagnosis, in the form of prognosis and day-to-day -day management of the cases. So for this, we will see some of the cases on day-to-day -day basis, how this ultrasound changes the outcome of the patient. At the same time, we will go through the limitations and current training available in various parts of the world. So we will discuss the role of the cardiac ultrasound, role of cranial ultrasound, role of lung ultrasound and the lines detection position in day-to-day -day practice. What is important in the bedside ultrasound, it is a focused, it is a bedside, it is a real time and we do serial ultrasound on day 1, day 4, day 5 and then we see the functions of the various parts of the body. On that basis of the function, we understand the physiology. From the functions, from the physiology, we take the decisions about the treatment of the baby. Once we have started the treatment, ultimately, we see the response of the treatment by this base ultrasound, which some people also call clinician perform ultrasound. The base ultrasound is useful as to give the answers in the form of yes or no. The base ultrasound in neonatology, if you see the heart related functions, that is called as functional echocardiography, that does my baby has a hemodynamically significant PDA. Does the baby have high pulmonary pressures? Does the cardiac output is high or low? Is the baby's contractility is normal or abnormal? Or is there any free fluid into the heart as a pericardial effusion? And the preload is a problematic or not on the basis of IVC? That answers we get as yes or no in the functional cardiography. While in the brain, we get answer is there any bleed? Is there any issues related to the Doppler? These are the answers we get from the cardinal ultrasound. To understand these answers, now we are going through some cases on day-to-day -day basis of the patients which we deal on neonatology. So let's see this case. This is a 34-weeker baby who is 1.4 kg. This baby was stable till day 4. And suddenly, we started having apneas and bradycardias with hyperglycemia and baby required ventilation. Along with this ventilation, the baby's blood pressure dropped drastically. If you see the mean blood pressure, this baby's mean blood pressure is only 20. For 34 weeks, you will at least require blood pressure of 35. Along with the low blood pressure, baby has low urine output. Baby has a prolonged capillary pill time and maybe on the ABG show, severe acidosis with high lactate. For this baby, we did the functional echocardiography. This functional echocardiography shows bidirectional PDA and right to left component associated to the left to right component. Along with this functional echocardiography, the left ventricle output in this baby is 611, while right ventricle output is a 578 ml per kg per minute. The normal cardiac output for 34 weeker, you expect around 150 to 250 ml per kg per minute. This is with high potential, with high cardiac output, and this baby also had reversal of flow, reversal of flow into the anterior cerebral artery. This baby shows the mass in the brain with cystic lesion, with the liquefaction, and this coincides with the brain abscess. So this baby has high cardiac output high potential, severe acidosis, the heart ultrasound has shown the baby has a high cardiac output which is a vasodilatory shock. The brain ultrasound showed the baby's naturally, I have to start a treatment as antibiotic which covers my granulatory sepsis. 
At the same time, we have done the study which shows that the baby put, if you see the right ventricle output and left ventricle output in these babies is around 350 to 380 ml per kg per minute. So we concluded from this paper that the babies with a preterm late onset neural sepsis has a high cardiac output associated of vasodilatory shock. So the babies, when you think about the sepsis with high cardiac output, you can think about volume risk replacement, dopamine as your drug of choice for the vasodilatory shock, adrenaline is the same as your drug of choice. So my functional echocardiography, bedside ultrasound has helped me in selection of inotropes. Bedside ultrasound has helped me in diagnosis of sepsis. It has helped me in the form of duration of management of the cardiac output. These babies then we think about low cardiac output and functional echocardiography and then we start normal saline. We give the drugs like a dopamine and epinephrine as a drug of choice on the basis of the functional echocardiography. Let's see the second case, right fluid. This may be presented with the severe respiratory distress with the poor capillary fever. X-ray suggests to observe recurrent aspiration. Baby was not maintaining on the conventional ventilation. Hence, the baby shifted to high frequency ventilation, 100% oxygen. In 100% oxygen, this baby's DO2 was always less than 80, and blood pressure is ranging from 30 to 35. And hence, the functional echocardiography tricuspid regurgitation. This baby's tricuspid regurgitation measured by Bernoulli's equation, pulmonary equation is R67. So, what we saw this baby, the baby with the setup of mechanism aspiration, with the severe pulmonary hypertension, bidirectional PDA. You can see this PDA, which is a bidirectional. Hence, we have labeled this baby as a mechanism aspiration with severe pulmonary hypertension. What we need from this information that these are the babies which requires improvement in blood pressure as a pulmonary vascularity. And hence, on the basis of the functional echocardiography, we started as a drug in the form of a pill, or you can think about as a renal insufficiency. And if the baby deteriorates, you can think about starting nitric oxide depending upon your pulmonary pressures on day to day monitoring. That means my functional echocardiography has setting of vasodilators, selecting of the drugs, and drug treatment monitoring. That's the role of bedside cardiac ultrasound. This is another case who is a 26 speaker who is a 700 gram with no sepsis markers given the initial type of surfactant therapy. And this baby's blood pressure, you can see. The baby's blood pressure at 24 hours is down to 18 with wide pulse pressure along with and hence the functional echocardiography done. If you see the functional echocardiography for short axis view, this shows a classic preterm PDA. This PDA was a PDA with LAO ratio 1.5 and more than 1.5. This baby has 1.9. Along with this preterm PDA, which is a left to right, this baby has. The reversal of flow, if you see this baby's reversal of flow in the ascending aorta, the reversal of flow into the anterior aorta. So the baby has preterm PDA, which is the left to right, baby has a high LAO ratio, and baby has a reversed endastolic flow in the descending aorta. So what does it mean that this baby fulfills the criteria of hemodynamic PDA, which is more than 3 millimeter, the pulmonary over circulation marker in the form of LAO ratio, which is more than 1.5, and baby has a reversal of flow into the descending aorta or anterior artery. Hence, this functional echocardiography for this hypotension. But what we require is the treatment of the duct is most important. So, functional echocardiography shows that this hypotension, cause of this hypotension is preterm PDA. If we treat this preterm PDA, ultimately we will be in a better shape for the outcome of this babies. Let's see the next case, which is a 38 weaker with no risk factor for sepsis, but baby has evidence of parental depression as a girl scores were 3 at 5 minutes with a quad pH was 7.15 with a basic CS was minus 16 with a lactate of 8. This baby's blood pressures are 36 to 40 time and blood gas shows severe acidosis. This baby's functional echocardiography shows the poor contractility with issues in the form of functional shortening as 16% with a low cardiac output. So the baby with a low functional shortening, with a low cardiac output, if you see the pulmonary velocity is less than 0.3 in this baby, that indicates the per kg per minute. This baby's cardiac output came out as a 75 ml per kg per minute. So the baby with a parental depression, with a poor contractility, with a poor cardiac output, naturally, I will be seeing the brain ultrasound also. 
this baby's brain ultrasound shows the RI that is resistant that's choose in the form of the diastolic flow here in the brain ultrasound. Ultimately, this baby is a good candidate for therapeutic hypothermia. This baby is to improve the contactility. I need an inotrope which acts on the beta receptor, and that's why we started the dopamine, which improves the cardiac output in these babies. And functional echocardiography has helped in, the, in selecting these inotropic agents in these babies. Hence, in the baby with the parental asphyxia, with the myocardial dysfunction, you need to start your bolus of normal saline. Think about giving the inotropic support in the form of if the blood pressure also drops. And hence, we did a study to see the importance of the bedside cardiac ultrasound as a neurotal functional echocardiography in India. And we found out enough with measuring the PD assessment, the PPHN assessment, hemodynamic instability, cause of hypotension, and the line position. These are the main indications which we have utilized in these conditions. The next case, this is a 26 week old baby came from the outside of the hospital with a stress. At two hours of the life, baby was in the ICU. If you see the x-ray, the x-ray shows white out lung, while the functional echo shows baby has a poor contactility. Baby has a poor cardiac output, perfect contactility. But when we did an ultrasound brain in this baby, this ultrasound brain showed massive hemorrhage into the brain. This is a classic example of a periventricular hemorrhagic infarction. So when we consider this babies, the long-term outcome seems to be bad. Now, let's see the next case. This case is a 30 weaker, which is 1.1 kg. This is also outbound baby. The long day zone of life with apnea, bradycardia, and seizures. Baby had a severe hypotension, required intubation. And if you see the functional echocardiography contractility, baby has a TR, baby has a MR, and these are the hemodynamic instability markers which we saw onto the echocardiograph. If you see the brain ultrasound in this baby, the irregular lining at the ventricles, and you can see that this is a classic example of a ventriculitis because of the gram negative sepsis. He came from outbound as a gram negative sepsis with a brain involvement as a ventriculitis with ventricular dilatation. Naturally, I need a treatment in the form of portus ventricular monitoring in the form of living synthesis. This baby we also did a hip ultrasound, and that hip ultrasound shows the hip collection that means of the bad things. This is the this is the another case. This is the 36 weaker. A 2.5 kg outbound baby. Baby came at baby required ventilation. And you can see from the functional echocardiography, the baby has severe TR jet. The baby has the TR jet measured, the measures are 42 to 50. So the baby with tachycardia, with a poor perfusion, with a large liver, with the pulmonary hypertension, this baby, we have done the brain ultrasound. The brain ultrasound shows. The, you can see this one mass of the Doppler as a color Doppler. This is the blood collection. So this is nothing but the vein of calcium formation. May be presented as may be as presented as innovation. So ultimately, the interventional radiology is going and we have started this baby in the form of antics. Let's see the next case. This is the unregistered term baby with the respiratory distress and cyanosis in the NIC, prolonged capillary fill time with a severe metabolic acidosis and surprisingly when we did uh, the mass in the heart so this mass which is attached to the ventricles multiple masses attached to the ventricles this is nothing but the rhabdomyoma because of this rhabdomyoma eye examination and this eye examination showed the retinal astrocytoma in this baby because of the heart and the eye examination we also did the brain ultrasound which showed some form we did the MRI brain in this baby MRI brain showed the cortical tubercles at the sub ependymal level. So, on the basis of the finding of the heart, eye, cirrhosis, and the baby presented as a cyanosis. So, this baby, because of the bed cell ultrasound, we could able to diagnose early. At the same time, we have done the screening in the family, and we could able to find out the two affect tracing of the family. The next case which is also unregistered, which is a term baby with a severe respiratory distress, with a prolonged capillary fill time, with a severe metabolic acidosis. The cranial ultrasound done was normal, and hence the lung ultrasound done. This is the normal lung ultrasound actually. These are the A lines, which are the reflection of the brain. And in this baby, when we did this lung ultrasound, which shows the shredded paper appearance. And this shredded paper appearance, that is a congenital pneumonia in this baby. 
So we are able to diagnose pneumonia immediately bedside in one second, and we have avoided radiation, which is required for the X-rays. This is another carried KG. Baby not cried in the delay room, hence the team has interpreted the baby and shifted to the NICU. In the NICU, baby has a hypotension, baby has a prolonged capillary time, baby has a severe acidosis, baby's functional echocardiography is cardiac output, and hence baby's lung ultrasound done. This lung ultrasound actually is normal lung ultrasound. This is the lung, that's the diaphragm, that's the liver, and that's the found in the lung ultrasound. There is a collection of the fluid into the pleural. So this is a massive pleural effusion in this baby. If you see, this is the extra of this baby with a bilateral pleural effusion. And when we when the investigation and that turned up to the chiral societies. So the bedside ultrasound has showed that there is a there is a pleural effusion which is the chylothorax. The next case. This is a 27 week old 800 grammer. This baby started on delirium CPA. The baby we did initial technology. The functional echo done at 24 hours of life shows the period and we have given the ibuprofen but maybe tutorate it at 3 weeks of the life in the form of distension apnea, bradycardia and severe hypotension. Hence, the functional echo done showed high cardiac output. We did the liver ultrasound. You can see there is an air in the liver. This is the classic, this is the classic example of a portal vein gas. So you can see this X-ray. X-ray show ultrasound correlates with that X-ray and there is a small ascites also. So this baby is NEC stage 3 which is the perforation with putamin gas. This baby require immediate intervention as urgent laparotomy. And that means the base ultrasound helped in diagnosis of NEC in this patient. This is another case with the term baby with a severe oligodermios with and in the delay room baby required intubation. The baby's blood pressure was also low. Maybe has a prolonged capillary pill time. Maybe has on examination large look into the abdomen. Maybe she showed severe acidosis. Echocardiography showed pulmonary hypertension. And hence, the point of care, the multiple cystic lesions in the kidney that correspond to the polycystic kidney disease. Immediately, the family council and management started. And hence, the abdominal ultrasound, kidney ultrasound helped in diagnosing this patient. This is another patient. Who is a 23 days old presented with a respite? Baby has received previously two courses of antibiotics. This time also, baby had came for the infection, and baby's saturations were 85 to 90 percent. Baby's hypoxia test also failed, PO2 also came 42. Functional echocardiography showed pulmonary hypertension in the form of a severe tachycardic irritation. The structural echocardiography is an issue related to the pulmonary hypertension. Immediately, we did this baby's lung ultrasound, which is normal, brain ultrasound, which is normal. We did the abdominal ultrasound. This abdominal ultrasound showed is dilated portal veins with additional drainage of the vessels. That means our IVC is receiving additional veins from the heart. And these are the actually the hepatic veins, which their pulmonary veins are draining to the hepatic veins. So this is the classic case of partial TAPV. The two vessels were draining to the heart, that is into the left atrium, while the two vessels were draining into the lymphatic veins. So this baby diagnosed the TAPVC. So this is a classic case of use of bedside ultrasound. Bedside ultrasound is also useful to have a position detection of the lines. If you see this one, this line, which is the too low line, the line should be at the level of IV. The UVC is going to the heart. We need to remove this one. With this marker, this baby, we need to remove this UVC from the heart. You know the complications of keeping the line in the heart. So, if we see this baby with the functional echocardiography, you can see the line in the heart. When we did this functional echocardiography, the, it was crossing to the LA and immediately we removed the line. That's a, that's a good example. While in this case, the line was at subcutaneous level. This is the abnormal position of the line and hence we have removed both the lines. This is the usefulness of bedside ultrasound. This is another example. This is where you can detect the position of the endotracheal tube position by the ultrasound. That's the aorta. That's the level of the carina and that's carina. So this is the classic. This is the endotracheal tube position and that's the carina. So this baby's line position is right. This is the spinal ultrasound. This spinal ultrasound with the Doppler shows the vessels at the spine level. And this is useful to actually traumatic taps will not be there. That's a classic good example of base ultrasound to avoid the traumatic taps. 
where cerebral tasum is also useful to diagnose the pericardial effusion. At the same time, it is useful to tap pericardial tamponade and save the baby's life. This is another case where we can show the massive right sided pericardial effusion immediately. So ultrasound is useful for diagnosis as well as therapeutic tapping also and for the treatment purposes also. We have designed the protocol for the bare cell ultrasound when the baby deteriorates. So when the baby deteriorates, we do the cardiac ultrasound in the form of to see the structure part, to see the filling, contractility and preload, to check pulmonary and systemic pressures in the baby's body quality. In the cranial ultrasound, we check for the intracranial, intraventricular hemorrhage and we do see the cerebral arteriosities. We do lung ultrasound to see for pneumothorax, to see the effusion and to see the consolidation. For abdominal ultrasound, we check the pre -fluid. We check, we check the NEC size, we check the kidney size and bladder bowel size in these patients with the blood body. And for the lines, we check the line position, we do check the uh, pericardial and pericardial inclusion. So this is very important protocol when the newborn, when the baby deteriorates, you do have the role of ultrasound checking in this one side. The bare cell ultrasound, you require training, activation and membership. In the neonatology, these things have started coming out. It is not one day, you have to start induction course as a day. and on that basis, the few societies like Austrian society, European society and Canadian society have started the programs. They have different names. We have said CCPU in Austrian society, TNE in Canadian society, NEM in American society, while the European society shows neurologists perform echocardiography, while in India we say the point of the ultrasound. Those are the various names we do give for these societies. We do conduct a lot of workshops. So far so we have conducted around 35 workshops in India and now we have started conducting workshops in the European country also. The emergency medicine, if you see the various articles in the world literature, they have started emerging as a various important role as a basis of ultrasound. In Indian setups, also, we have written these articles in the pediatrics as a role of you can go through these ones. We also done the living literature for the lung ultrasound at the same time for the brain ultrasound. You can have those immediate readymade references. This is the a book written by our team as a base of ultrasound and the neutral cardiology, which includes all the modalities of the base of ultrasound. We have written a small book as a, a pictorial, as a, as a uh, immediate tool which will be helpful for them in the diagnosis of these patients. Recently, we have published a book which is uh, Atlas of Point of Care Neutral Cranial Ultrasound, which has all the images related to the 400 images related to the brain ultrasound, which is useful in diagnosis and managing a newborn patients, which are the complete uh, year old ones. We have done a small survey in India about the role of brain cell ultrasound in Indian NICUs. Ultrasound almost Almost major NICUs, those who have ultrasound, they use the ultrasound for the cranial ultrasound and for the purpose of the cardiac ultrasound. The issue in India is in the form of a PCP entity act, which we say that they have started using the base cell ultrasound as their modality in the form of the point of care. So I said there are some limitations. Definitely, base cell ultrasound, you require training, you require day to day practice, and you need to generate good images. You need to have a moderator or mentor who can guide you or can save those good images. And hence, a proper training of six months or one year is mandatory for this point of care neural ultrasound to gain knowledge. Hence, we would like to summarize the role of ultrasound in the field of neonatology as in the critical assessment, as to find out the pericardial tamponade, pleural diffusion, ascites, hemoperitoneum, interventricular hemorrhage. For the screening purpose of IVH, to diagnose the PDA, to diagnose the pulmonary hypertension, to diagnose the hemodynamic studies, the ultrasound helps. Ultrasound also helps in the clinical procedures like thoracosynthesis, formation of the placements of the lines like UVC, UAC, central venous line, endotrical tube position, and the feeding tube position. We are using ultrasound for the research purpose also to measure the cardiac output, to measure the SPC flow, to measure the mesentic blood flow. That's the research things which are going to help in the future and that will come into the day to day practice. With this, I would like to say thank you for patience here. Thank you.